Hi, Mark Donovan here, and today I'm gonna to go over ILS and localizer approaches. I'm gonna explain what they are and how they're flown uh, for instrument-rated pilots. I'm also gonna to briefly touch upon uh, no gyro or radar approaches, your PAR and ASR approaches. So hopefully you find this video um, very useful, and if you do, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified when I come out with my next video. Okay, ILS and localizer approaches explain. So what is an ILS and localizer approach? Well, an instrument landing system or ILS approach is a precision radio navigation system that helps pilots land an aircraft safely on a runway in low visibility or bad weather conditions. An ILS uses highly directional radio transmitters on the ground to give both lateral and vertical guidance for an exact approach alignment path for an inbound aircraft to descend and land. It results in giving a three-dimensional approach to a runway. A localized approach is a non-precision ILS approach that uses a ground-based radio beam to guide a pilot's aircraft horizontally toward the runway centerline, but there's no vertical guidance um, provided in this localized approach, just lateral guidance. So let's take a look back at VFR approaches first before we get further into the ILS and localizer approaches. So VFR pilots use a PAPI or VASI lights to make a safe descent angle approach to the runway. They look for a particular color code scheme of red and white lights to ensure they're on proper glide slope to the runway. With PAPI lights, if the aircraft is on proper glide slope, the pilot will see two red and two white lights adjacent to one another. If all four lights are red, the aircraft is too low, and if all four lights are white, the aircraft is too high. So as long as you're seeing two reds and two whites side by side, uh, then you know you're on the proper glide slope, usually about three degrees of glide slope. With VASI lights, where there's stacked um, pairs of lights, sometimes two, sometimes three um, pairs, uh, with these VASI lights, if the aircraft is on proper glide slope, the pilot will see two red lights on top and two white lights on bottom for a two-bar VASI system. If each pair of lights are all red, they're too low, and if they're all white, the aircraft is too high. Um, there's a little bit of a saying here, white over white, you're high as a kite, red over white, you're all right, red over red, you're dead. So if you see red over red, it's time to rest that descent, add power, and just maintain altitude till you get established back onto the proper visual glide slope. So how does ILS glide slope and vertical guidance work? So with ILS, the visual VFR lights are replaced with radio signals, 90 hertz and 150 hertz, for glide slope, and the antennas are located where the VASI and PAPI lights are located. We use our VOR receiver to pick up the ILS radio signals. We tune in the VOR um, receiver nav side into the ILS uh, frequency associated with the approach. Uh, the typical glide slope is three degrees uh, horizontal for the glide slope, but it can vary depending on the airport or the approach. If the aircraft is on proper glide slope, the horizontal needle will be located halfway down the CDI, or centered if you will. If the horizontal needle is above the CDI center, the aircraft is below glide slope. If the horizontal needle is below the CDI center, the aircraft is above the glide slope. Um, due to signal reflections from the ground, a glide slope should be intercepted by approaching from beneath it. Um, there are reflections, if you will, uh, on those um, signals that go out. And if you approach from too high of an altitude, you may actually be on one of these reflected signals and not have accurate or proper uh, glide slope information being provided to you. So it's always important that you intercept the glide slope um, from beneath it. Um, looking at uh, the profile view of an instrument approach procedure, the feather here on the right represents the glide slope. So how does the ILS lateral guidance work? So ILS provides both vertical and horizontal or lateral guidance information for landing an aircraft in instrument meteorological conditions, or IMC. Uh, again, two radio signals are transmitted out from the far end of the runway, one on the left at 90 hertz and one on the right at 150 hertz. The two signals are directed so they intercept on a course that guides the aircraft towards the runway centerline. This transmission course is known as a localizer and represented by a feather as well on the instrument approach procedure. Again, we use our VOR receiver to pick up the signals. If the aircraft is to stay on the localizer, the CDI or vertical CDI needle will be centered. If the vertical needle is to the left of the CDI, the aircraft uh, is to the right of the localizer course. If the vertical needle is to the right of the CDI center, 
the aircraft is to the left of the localizer course. And in either case, we'd have to correct appropriately to get that needle centered up. So here we have the localizer antenna on the far end of the runway. So the air traffic coming in would be approaching from this way, and the localizer will be putting out uh, those signals, both the 90 and 150 hertz signal, um, out towards this direction. Um, at the approach threshold, the signal is 700 feet wide, or 350 feet either side. Uh, this is the localizer antenna on the far side of the approach, uh, and it's putting out a beam um, out toward, um, toward the right here, and the aircraft is trying to follow that center beam in by making sure the vertical needle is, is centered um, as it comes in on the approach. Um, due to runways having different lengths, the angle of transmission varies to ensure the 700-foot wide signal. Um, the ILS also provides distance information via marker beacons. There's an outer marker beacon, which I show here on the right in the circle. Uh, these identify where the glide slope intercept is, or the final approach fix, and they're usually located uh, four to seven nautical miles from the runway. We've got the middle marker. This identifies the decision height, uh, lights flashing amber. And then finally, there's inner markers. This identifies decision height for a CAT2 ILS um, light flashes white, um, uh, usually right next to the... Um, um, the radio itself. To fly an ILS approach, we must tune our nav radio to the localizer frequency. And you can see in this little cutout here, the localizer frequency for this um, particular ILS approach is 108.5. So we want to tune that in um, to the nav radio. Um, <clears throat> this localizer frequency also provides a um, glide slope frequency that's paired with that localizer frequency. Uh, the nav radio will pick it up automatically. Uh, the aircraft's nav radio will also receive an identifier signal in Morse code. And once we've uh, tuned in this localizer frequency, we want to turn that nav audio on so we can hear that Morse code to confirm that we indeed have the localizer live. So unlike a VOR, the localizer and glide slope signals are not broadcast in all directions. They're not omnidirectional. They're highly directional instead. Thus, you have to be lined up, relatively speaking, with them to receive them and get an accurate signal. Uh, proper indication um, of a VOR signal is only guaranteed at plus or minus 35 degrees when you're 10 nautical miles out from the localizer antenna, and plus or minus 10 degrees only at 18 nautical miles out from either side of the runway. Um, as an aircraft approaches the localizer course, the needle will come alive, or the localizer will come alive. Uh, when the aircraft is directly on the localizer course, the vertical needle will be centered. As the aircraft approaches the final approach fix, the glide slope needle will drift downwards until it's centered. Just before the final approach fix, this is where the aircraft should be configured for landing, gear down, flaps to be um, to the preferred position. Also, the uh, before landing checklist should be complete. At the final approach fix, the pilot focuses on keeping both the localizer and glide slope, slope needles centered until the decision altitude. Uh, so it's really at this point where the pilot is completely fixated on making sure he's keeping those needles centered, if this is an ILS approach. If it was a localized approach, all he would be keeping centered is the vertical needle because all he's going to be getting is uh, lateral guidance. Uh, last thing I want to just briefly mention is no gyro and radar PAR and ASR approaches. So a no gyro approach is a radar guided approach that pilots can use when their directional gyro or other stabilized compass is not working or is inaccurate. Uh, precision approach radar and an airport surveillance radar are both types of radar approaches that air traffic controllers can um, provide to pilots uh, when they have a no gyro situation. So PAR provides vertical and lateral guidance and is a, considered a precision approach. Uh, matter of fact, the only precision approaches that are technically legal are your ILS approach and a PAR approach. Uh, RNAV, LPV approaches are not considered actual precision approaches, even though they have the performance basically down to an instrument uh, landing system or ILS approach. Um, in order to fly this type of PAR, uh, sophisticated radar is necessary to scan both azimuth and elevation. Um, and then the second one here is the ASR, which is a uh, airport surveillance radar, and again, only provides heading information and is a non-precision approach. So you're basically just getting lateral information. Uh, this is a labor-intensive uh, exercise because a dedicated controller is required to provide vectors for each airplane. Um, back when I was taking instrument uh, training, um, we were able to fly these types of approaches at a nearby airport, and I felt they were highly valuable. So if you live near an airport that um, has this type of uh, capability with the tower, I highly suggest uh, having yourself and the students get a chance to, to fly these. 
So those are the basics of an ILS and localizer approach, both in terms of how they're designed as well as how you fly them. In addition, hopefully you found some information useful regarding those no gyro approaches, both the PAR and ASR. Again, they're pretty cool to do if you're anywhere near an airport that can offer those services for pilots to practice on. Anyways, hopefully you found this video helpful, and if you did, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified when I come out with my next video.